Welcome back to Exploring the Old Testament. I'm Dr. Hutchins, and today we want to look at the first book of the prophets, that is Isaiah. Isaiah, he was uh, prophesying in Jerusalem in the southern kingdom of Judah. Remember, after Solomon, the kingdom of Israel was split into a northern kingdom, what we often call the kingdom of Israel, and the southern kingdom, the kingdom of Judah. And Isaiah is there in the southern kingdom, and he is living about 700 years before the coming of Jesus Christ. And the main idea of his book is that God will judge Judah, but not just Judah, God will judge Judah and the nations, but he will send a servant who will save all nations. So in the book of Isaiah, that, that idea that God is sending his servant, which is Isaiah's main word for the Messiah, the king in the line of David, that that servant is going to be the one through whom God's going to save not just his people, but the entire world. The book of Isaiah splits into three main sections. The first 35 chapters, God will judge the sin of Judah and the nations. The main idea in these chapters is that Isaiah is looking at the current state of his nation and the, and the world as well. So he looks at Judah's sin, he looks at the sin of the nations, he, he sees how God's going to save his people, um, he tells the people that they need to trust in him, uh, but ultimately this is a message that the people are not going to listen to. In chapters 36 to 39, we get a break between the prophecy and now we have uh, uh, some stories, some historical narrative about um, the nation of Israel in the time period of Isaiah. So God saves Judah from Assyria, but God will judge them through Babylon. So we see this story about how um, God saves is Judah and King Hezekiah miraculously from the nation of Assyria, that is the superpower at the time that's going to destroy them. But we also see this hint that in the future, about 200 years later, God is going to use the kingdom of Babylon, which will emerge as the superpower to destroy Judah. And then we shift into the final part of the book of Isaiah, chapters 40 to 66, God will redeem his people and the world. This is a really broad-looking uh, section of the book that sees how God is going to work in the last days, in the final period of human history, to send his servant, the Messiah, and to save the world and bring about his kingdom. One of the main ideas of the book of Isaiah is that God is sovereign over all things. So Isaiah discusses the activities of these great nations, Assyria, Egypt, Babylon. But what is clear is that it is God that is in control of all of human history. And so God, when he reveals himself to Isaiah, and Isaiah sees this actual vision of God, God is seated on a throne, like the enthroned king he is of the entire universe. And so God declares himself, I am God and no one is like me. He fills the whole earth with his glory. He says in Isaiah 46, 9 through 10, I declare the end from the beginning and from long ago what is not yet done, saying my plan will take place and I will do all of my will. So God is in control of all of human history, of everything in the world, and it is that sovereign power that he's going to use to execute judgment against the sin of Judah and the sin of the nations. But it's the same sovereign power that gives us the hope that God is going to bring about um, salvation, not just for the nation of Israel, but for the world. God has a plan, and He will establish that plan. Um, so this brings us to the plan, and the plan is centered around the servant. To save His people, God has to solve the issue of the people's sin. So Isaiah foresees a day when God's going to do that through the servant. The servant is the one who God's going to anoint with the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. He's going to be this righteous man 
who is going to die for the sins of the nation as a sacrifice. Isaiah 53 is one of the most important chapters in the entire Old Testament because it clearly predicts the suffering and death of Jesus. Isaiah foresees that God's servant will be rejected by men. He will be a man of suffering, uh, but his death will not be for his own sin. He will die in the place of the people. It says in Isaiah 53, 5, but he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed because of our iniquities. Punishment for our peace was on him, and we are healed by his wounds. We are like sheep that ran away, but God punished the servant for us. This is God's plan of salvation, to save us from our sin by punishing his servant, his righteous, innocent servant in our place. And then through that, God's going to bring about everything new. God will bring about a new David, a new Exodus, a new creation. So the new David is the servant. The servant is the king who is in the line of David. It says in Isaiah 11, 1, that even though the exile is going to come, even though Babylon's going to take the people away and destroy the kingdom of Judah, and it's going to be like a tree that is cut down, there's going to be a shoot that's going to grow up out of the stump of Jesse, the family of David. And this is the Messiah. He will reign on the throne of David, Isaiah 9, 7, and over his kingdom, and that kingdom will extend to the ends of of the earth. And when the new David comes, Isaiah says, God will bring about a new exodus. So like the original exodus, in the new exodus, God will free his people from their captivity, gather them to himself, but he's going to free them not just from a nation like Egypt or even from the Babylonian exile, he's going to free them from their sins. And he's going to bring them into a new creation. This is the great hope that God's people will have a new home, which is a new Jerusalem in a new creation. And this is how the book of Isaiah ends in Isaiah 62 in Isaiah 66, that even though the city of Jerusalem that they knew in that day would be destroyed by the Babylonians, God was going to make a new Jerusalem that he would actually dwell in with his people a new Jerusalem that actually will expand to encompass not just a small city, but all of creation where God will dwell with his people. Isaiah 66, 22, this is towards the end of the book, says, For just as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make will remain before me, this is the Lord's de declaration, so your offspring and your name will remain. God has a covenant love he has set upon his people, and he will fulfill all of his promises to his people. But it's going to happen through the suffering of a servant in a new creation. And of course, this is exactly what points us to Jesus. Jesus is the servant who suffered on behalf of the people. Jesus is the new David that Isaiah foresaw. Jesus is the one through whom salvation comes. Jesus is the one who brings about the forever kingdom of God. And Jesus is the one who will bring about the new creation where we will dwell with God.